Hi, this is Sarah Newman, your e-learning and TLC director, and I wanted to first thank those of you who have already submitted the reflection survey for us. We've already begun implementing some of your very good recommendations, and I wanted to show you some. We have an end of quarter checklist for you on the teaching and learning site, and we also have a start of quarter. So please take a moment to check that out. And if you need any help with the following, please contact our team so we can point you in the right direction and or update that information. You'll see that we're available online Monday through Friday in Zoom 11 to 3 and in live chat from 10 to 5. Let's go back to our end of quarter checklist. So on here, as you all know, we submit our grades before the deadline. That's a link to the instructor briefcase. You might want to send out a congratulations message to your students via email or your Canvas inbox and let them know when and where their grades will be posted. Please update your people page if you haven't already and let them know what your away information might look like during the break. And if you're not sure how to manage your people page, our team is more than happy to help you and we have resources right here. In Canvas, there are two ways to continue to keep or to stop access to your Canvas course. If you'd like to provide an end date in your Canvas course, you're going to go to the course settings, details, and then choose an end date and save. If you want to have just a handful of students to continue to have access to your course, go ahead and fill out our help form and provide the course name and student information so I can create a special section in your course shelf for your student to continue to their work. This keeps their grades and assignments in the same shelf without impacting the rest of the class. Don't forget to export a copy of your course to your personal computer or copy your course into a manually created Canvas shell. Backing up your course materials is a requirement of safeguarding your materials each quarter. So that's pretty much it. If I'm missing something here, please let me know. Let me show you real quickly the getting ready for your next quarter. So the same thing, if you need any help with the following or if we're missing anything, please let us know. The instructor briefcase, at least one week before your new quarter begins, or sooner if you can, access your instructor briefcase for next quarter's list of students and their email addresses. Keeping in mind, most students don't know how to update their contact information in our college system, so you're not guaranteed to find the perfect email list in your instructor briefcase. However, it's a good place to start. Provide a welcome message to your students via email or Canvas, whichever is your preferred way, and link them to your people page. Again, if you don't have a people page, come on down here and our, our team is more than happy to help you. And we also have a page that provides information and a little video that I made that helps you update your page. Let's go back. Are your courses visible in Canvas? If not, please contact your program coordinator to confirm that you're listed as the teacher of record in the student management system. If you're correctly listed there, submit a request for us to take a look at your work and make sure that you provide both your ID and the course item numbers. Do you want your Canvas course sections merged? Please fill out this form before your class begins. I can't merge them once students have started submitting assignments and you're posting grades, but it can help you with merging any of those courses prior. You'll also want to identify which of your sections is the primary course so that I can push any sections you want into the correct section. I hope that makes sense. This form will tell you more. Syllabus. Here's a link to the template listed on the college website and we're asking for you to make sure that you also include the following eight, not seven, this clearly needs to be updated, resources on your syllabus. So put an academic calendar link. Provide our e-learning website link because on there we provide all of our student support service, our required skills and technology, a little overview of Canvas, student login guide, and more, most importantly, who supports what. We support instructional services like Canvas, Google Suite for Education, Honorlock, LinkedIn, Panopto, Stars, and Zoom. <sighs> and information technology services, our IT teams, provide support of at seattlecolleges.edu, networks and security, desktop provisioning, telecommunications, phones on campus, computers and labs, data projectors, printing and Wi-Fi. If you have any technology that you need, please contact us and we will make sure that we reach out to our Seattle College's IT folks to help us 
help you and your students with technology as needed. Here's some more information about that. So this is all on our e-learning website, and we hope you find its information valuable. All right, let's go back. Besides the e-learning website, Canvas Introduction for Students is a self-enroll mini course. That's a really good idea to make an assignment out of this for your students. Just direct them to this so that they can self-enroll and then ask them to go through this and provide proof that they have gone through it to provide a more successful introduction to using Canvas. Okay, we'll go back here. And next is college email accounts. There are two email accounts. One is required and one is bonus. Our required at Seattle Colleges is used to access campus computers, connect with printers, Wi-Fi, Office 365 applications, and much, much more. This is required and they need to activate that through tools.seattlecolleges.edu. They're going to go to get my credentials and type in their student ID and their PIN. Their default PIN is their birth date. Once they have those credentials, then they have access to their at seattlecolleges.edu account. The bonus account is your at southseattle.edu Google Suite for Education and it provides a whole lot of great tools as well. So again, Microsoft Office 365 and Google Suite for Education. One is required and one is bonus. Let's go back. Counseling and advising. We have Starfish now. To schedule appointments with advising, you want to click on Starfish and indicate your preferred method for connecting with your advisor. So they provide all the steps here. Disability Accommodations and Services. This is where students can request services and complete an intake appointment with the Disability Services Office. Again, all their information is right here. And this page also provides faculty resources. If you need to know how to refer students, their accommodation procedure, note-taking, confidentiality, exams, accessible technology, and so forth. Don't forget, we need to have a web accessible Canvas course and curriculum. If you need any help with that, please get in touch with any of our team and we're happy to help you with that. Media release. If you're running live instructional sessions with your students, you have a release form for your students that they could submit to you. So whether you, maybe you do a syllabus quiz and you ask if they've read it and if they agree to it, maybe that could be part of a syllabus quiz. It's up to you how you want to do that, but we wanted to make sure to add that. Tutoring. We have a lot of really great online tutoring resources for remote operations. There is a Canvas page that's public where our tutoring center staff manages information. And to view tutors drop-in schedules, you can also use Starfish, the students can, and they provide all that information right here. You'll also find MAST, MAL, Writing Center, and so forth on the left-hand side. So these are all really valuable links and bits of information that we'd like you to add to your syllabus if you don't already have those on there. Lastly, well, almost lastly, FERPA. If you're not current on FERPA, be sure to review this this short self-paced training in Canvas put together by Joyce Allen and her team. If you have questions about FERPA, please contact Joyce Allen, our Dean of Enrollment Services. And then one month before the end of a quarter, so here's an example for spring quarter. You want to both set up and then later, after the quarter is over, review online course evaluations here. So you're going to log into your inside.seattlecolleges and then once you're logged in, you can set up how and who goes over your evaluations. And all their FAQs are listed in this link. And if you have any questions, please contact Ali Fa. All right, that's it for me. Again, if you could please fill out that reflection survey that I sent out on Sunday, that is super useful. And we've already been applying very good recommendations. Thanks for watching.